the 25th lecture in signals and systems and the title is region of convergence of Laplace transform and properties of Laplace transform. In the last lecture <coughs> we had introduced the Laplace transform and it was defined as x of s given a function x of t you multiply by e to the minus s t and integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity. And we said that <coughs> not only the <coughs> expression, the algebraic or the analytical expression for x of s is important, but you have to specify what is known as a region of convergence. That is, this integral shall not exist, may not exist at all values of s. You have to specify a region in which this integral converges. <coughs> and this is the main difference between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. And we also showed that for S is in general a complex quantity and that for sigma equal to 0, Laplace transform is the same as the Fourier transform. And we said that capital X of S it can be looked upon as the Fourier transform of X of t e to the minus sigma t where e to the minus sigma t was identified as the convergence factor. That is, the presence of this sometimes ensures that Laplace transform exists, but the Fourier transform of x of t may or may not exist. We also saw an interpretation of this, the existence of Laplace versus Fourier transform. We also saw a graphical interpretation that is, if the Laplace transform ROC does not include the g omega axis, that is, does not include sigma equal to 0, then the Fourier transform cannot exist. This is the interpretation in terms of uh, <coughs> the regions of S plane. We took some examples uh, to show that this expression, we took two, two examples. One was <coughs> that this may correspond to two time functions. One is e to the minus a t u t and for this case the region of convergence, the region of convergence is <coughs> is the s plane to the right of s equal to minus a. This is the region of convergence you notice that s equal to minus a is a pole of the x of s, correct? Is a pole or only pole of the expression x of s. And so, the region of convergence is the region of the s plane to the right of a vertical line passing through the pole, all right? We also showed that the same expression 1 by s plus a can also be the Fourier transform of x of t equal to minus e to the minus a t u of minus t. It can also be the Fourier transform of this provided the region of convergence is, is to the left of the pole. That is, you have s equal to minus a, then the region of convergence is here. <coughs> we did these two examples last time to show the non-uniqueness of Laplace transform if ROC is not specified. If this expression along with its ROC is specified, then this would be the time domain function. On the other hand, if the expression is specified along with this region of convergence, then you know that this is the expression. In general, we shall prove in a few minutes that such signals which exist to the right of a vertical line parallel to the g omega axis, this for example exists only for t greater than, I beg your pardon, in the time domain, in the time domain. If it exists to the right of a particular point on the t axis, obviously, for this function it exists only for t greater than equal to 0. Such a signal is called a right sided signal RSS. Well, the 
the symbol <coughs> is an unhappy choice in the Indian context, but I can't do anything. Um, it's a right-sided signal. So any signal which exists to the right of a particular value, let's say t equal to t1, if you have a signal like this, it doesn't exist to the left, this is the t-axis, then this is called a right-sided signal. And e to the minus a t u of t is a right-sided <coughs> signal. Any signal x of t, let's say u of t plus capital T, for example, exists only to the right of small t greater than small t equal to minus cap t and therefore it is a right sided signal. Right sided signal need not necessarily start at the origin. It can start anywhere on the time axis, but it exists only non-zero values exist only to the right of that particular point. Such a signal is called a right sided signal and <coughs> you have seen uh, that if the signal is e to the minus a t u t, it is a right sided signal and its region of convergence in the S plane is a right part of the S plane. That is, which part? The part lies to the right of a vertical line passing through minus A, passing through minus A. So, this as we shall see is a property of all right sided signals. That is, right sided signals, the region of convergence is to the right of a vertical line parallel to the g omega axis. In a similar manner, e to the minus e to the minus a t u of minus t is an L S S, a signal which exists only to the left side, <coughs> a signal like this, let us say t equal to t 2, let us use a different color, a signal like this, which let us say x 2 of t, which exists only to the left of a particular point on the t axis is called a left sided signal, it is to the left. The left sided signal need not necessarily start at t equal to 0, it can start anywhere, it can start at a positive value of t, it can start at a negative value of t, but this is what a left sided signal is and you notice that an example of the left sided signal is this signal which exists to the left of t equal to 0 <coughs> and it is a property of left sided signals which you shall prove in a moment that the region of convergence lies to the left of a vertical line parallel to the g omega axis. This line it passes through uh, passes through the pole, the only pole, minus A, all right. <coughs> there are two other points that one can make in connection with the help of these two examples and one of the points is that the region of convergence lies to the right of the pole, all right. The region of convergence lies to the right of the pole and here <coughs> For a left sided signal, <coughs> the region of convergence lies to the left of the pole. If there are more poles than one, then we shall show that the region of convergence lies for a right sided signal to the right of the rightmost pole. We will show this, all right. If there are another pole, let us say here then the region of convergence lies to the right of the rightmost pole, whereas in a left sided signal, there is no ambiguity here, left to left, right to right, okay. <coughs> in fact, the time domain uh, right or left is uh, transformed into right or left in the S domain, unlike uh, political implications uh, where uh, things change very rapidly and you do not know what is happening once a transformation occurs, here left remains left, all right, a left sided signal, the region of convergence we shall show a little later that if there are more poles than one, then the region of convergence lies to the left of the leftmost pole, all right, leftmost pole. We will see this, uh, <coughs> I wanted to make these comments in connection with this, so that when I actually do the proof, you understand what I am, what I am talking about. <coughs> We um, also introduced the concepts of poles, uh, zeros, and we showed that a rational function capital X of S, which is of the form P of S by Q of S, can be completely described by its poles and zeros except for a scaling constant. 
Uh, <coughs> and we started started a discussion of the properties of ROC, properties of the region of convergence. Uh, one thing we said is that uh, if a signal, well, <coughs> if a signal does not have poles, all right, we didn't say this. We said something else, but uh, something follows from that. Suppose a signal does not have poles, then what well, does not have poles means there are no finite poles, all right, because the number of poles and number of zeros must be the same. Ca can there be a, can there be a transform capital X of S which does not have poles? Yes or no? A polynomial. Okay, it doesn't have poles. Let's say S plus A. It's a polynomial. Doesn't it have poles? It is a pole at S equal to infinity. It is a zero at S equal to minus A. Number of poles and number of zeros must be the same, irrespective. Yes, that is one <coughs> interesting. X of s equal to 1 does not have poles and or zeros. Now, what is the ROC of this? It's a complete S plane. There is no question of existence of X of s. It's a constant. It always exists. Uh, and therefore, the whole S plane is its region of convergence. Now, we had <coughs> taken a more general function. You see, capital X of s equal to 1 what is x of t? I have not yet said how the inversion is taking place, but uh, you can easily see that x of t is a delta t. <coughs> if you apply the definition minus infinity to infinity, delta t e to the minus s t <coughs> dt, obviously this is equal to 1, because delta t exists at t equal to 0 only, and at t equal to 0 the exponential factor becomes 1, and so uh, x of t equal to delta t corresponds to x of s, capital X of s equal to 1. Now, x of t equal to delta t is a very special function. The question that we asked last time is, does there exist a function for which the region of convergence is the complete s plane? We did not ask this question. We made a statement. We made a statement that if a function x of t is existing over a finite <coughs> region of the t-axis, over a finite region like this, let us say capital T1 to capital T2, and we say that if capital X of S exists at some value of the real part of S equal to sigma 0, all right, that is we say that if there is a function x of t in the time domain and this Fourier transform converges for some s such that the real part is sigma 0, then we proved last time that it must converge for all values of sigma, whether sigma is greater than sigma 0 or less than sigma 0, it does not matter. In other words, we showed that for a time domain function which is time limited instead of band limiting, band limiting in the frequency domain, if x of t is time limited, that is, it exists for small t, um, capital T1 less than equal to small t less than equal to capital T2, then its Fourier transform, then its Laplace transform, if it exists, it may not exist. For example, there may be an infinite discontinuity in between, which is not a delta function, could be, all right. If it exists, then the complete S plane is its region of convergence. So, the total S plane is the region of convergence for at least two kinds of functions. One is nicely behaved time limited functions and the other class is delta t, all right, delta t. <coughs> delta t, the transform is a constant and therefore, it, irrespective of the point in the S plane, you shall always have it. Uh, we also uh, enunciated or stated another property. Uh, I am going through these properties in great detail because these are uh, extremely important conceptually. Uh, one can, given a problem, one can always work out mechanically or blindly without paying respect to the region of convergence and things like that. But where 
you have functions which exist that are right sided as well as left sided that is a general x of t which exists from uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity you shall have problems and therefore it is extremely important <coughs> to understand the concept of region of convergence. We, we stated besides this property this property was for what kind of functions the complete S plane is the ROC. Another property we said that the ROC must consist only of strips in the S plane, strips parallel to the g omega axis and what was the logic for this? The logic for this was that x of s is simply the Fourier transform of x t e to the minus sigma t. <coughs> In other words, the Fourier transform does not depend, Fourier transform of the function that we take does not involve omega at all and therefore, irrespective of omega, it depends on sigma only that is the real part of S and therefore, the region of convergence must be strips passing through specific values of sigma that is for some range of sigma the ROC the Fourier trans I am sorry the Laplace transform shall exist for some other values it may not exist, but it is totally determined by sigma omega plays no part and therefore, the lines which define the boundaries of ROC must be lines parallel to the g omega axis that is they are defined by the value of sigma at this point all right irrespective of omega whatever omega is it does not matter. So, ROC con consists of strips in the S plane. Now, these strips can be infinite in extent they can start at sigma equal to sigma 0 and they can go right up to sigma equal to infinity. They can be, they can be to the left of a line sigma equal to sigma 0, they start at sigma equal to sigma 0 and go right up to sigma equal to minus infinity. <coughs> they can be the total S plane that we have seen, they can also be strips like this, they can also be finite strips like this, finite in width not in length, the length may go to j infinity plus j infinity and minus j infinity. So, when you say finite strip we mean the width all right. Uh, these are basically three kinds well not three four kinds of ROC complete S plane right a right half plane no a right plane bounded by a line parallel to the j omega axis a left plane bounded by a line parallel to the j omega axis or a strip which is bounded on both sides all right by finite sigma 1 and sigma 2 these are the four kinds of ROCs and we shall take examples to show yes. Is there one strip, strip that consists of uh, both right handed and left handed planes without being the complete S plane like you have a blank portion in the middle and oh can I have that is an interesting question can I have this is sigma equal to 0 can I have Can we have something like this? Yes, yes that is possible. This is also possible. This is also possible. Can we have straight line as region of convergence? Yes, we have yes. Fourier transform if sigma equal to 0, if the Laplace transform exists only for sigma equal to 0, it is a line. And a line is a special case of a strip with 0 width, and therefore it is considered. So, there is a variety of uh, regions of convergence which are possible. Now, let us consider, <coughs> let us now uh, prove this assertion that if I have a right sided signal, it starts at some value of t, let us say capital T1 and exists only to the right of, uh, on the only to the right of capital T1, that is x of t is of the form, x of t is of the form f of t u t minus t1, agree? then it is called a right sided signal in RSS and let us see, let us see where its region of convergence lies and this is stated in the form of a theorem. It states, we state this theorem like this, if the Fourier, if the Laplace transform of x of t exists, if x of s exists at, if x of s exists at some value of sigma equal to sigma 0, 
all right, at some value of sigma <coughs> equal to sigma 0, then it exists for all sigma greater than sigma 0. That is, all sigma to the right of sigma 0 must be a region of convergence, all right. Now, let us see, let us see how to prove it. This is very, very simple. Um, by definition, capital X of S is equal to minus infinity to infinity X of T e to the minus S T dt and X of S exists at sigma equal to sigma 0 implies, implies that minus infinity to infinity mod X of T e to the minus sigma 0 t dt, this is <coughs> less than infinity. That is what it means because it converges at sigma equal to sigma 0. The mod of e to the minus j omega t is simply 1 and therefore we need not consider that. That is x of t e to the minus omega 0 t is absolutely integrable. Now, for a general sigma, for a general sigma, well, integral minus infinity to infinity, let us call this i, mod x of t e to the minus sigma t dt and since it is right sided signal, the lower limit should be converted to, should be changed to capital T. Did I say T1? Okay, capital T1. Alright, since it is a right sided signal. Now, <coughs> I can write this. I can write capital I as equal to integral T1 infinity mod X of T e to the minus sigma <coughs> 0 T dt. I am taking sigma 0 and I shall add a sigma 0 T. That is, I will multiply this by minus sigma minus sigma 0 T. Alright. Now, if sigma is greater than sigma 0, if sigma is greater than sigma 0, then obviously sigma minus sigma 0 is positive, right? And e to the power, e to the power minus a positive quantity multiplied by t will be the lowest, no, it will be the highest if we take the lower limit, is not that right? Because at the upper limit it is 0 and therefore capital I must be less than or equal to integral t1 to infinity mod x t e to the minus sigma 0 t dt and then e to the minus sigma minus sigma 0 capital <coughs> t1. I have replaced this variable function by a constant taken at the lower limit. At the lower limit this function is the highest and therefore the integral shall be less than or equal to this. Now by hypothesis this is less than infinity and of course this is a finite quantity less than infinity. Therefore, i is less than infinity. Can it be equal? No. Unless, unless the function exists at a single point. What kind of function is that? Can a function exist? Pardon me? It is either a delta function or just a vertical line. We are not concerned with such lines because there, this will be a vertical line means a one single sample of a sequence that is it is a discrete time signal. We are considering continuous time signal. So, we do not consider that kind of signal. All right. And therefore, i is less than infinity which proves the assertion that we had made that if x of t exists for a right sided signal, if x of t exists at sigma equal to sigma 0, then it exists at all values of sigma greater than sigma 0. In other words, the region of convergence is a right plane. You have to find out what is the minimum sigma 0. Agree? Starting from that minimum sigma 0, it goes right up to sigma equal to infinity. In a similar manner, you can show that for a left sided signal and I let me not make this proof because the proof is exactly similar. For a left sided signal LSS, if sigma equal to sigma 0 is a point of convergence of x of s, then all sigma less than sigma 0 is also in the region of convergence. That is, we have a left plane, a plane which is to the left of minimum sigma 0 as the region of convergence. 
Alright, the proof is exactly similar, so I shall not repeat it. Now if I have a two-sided signal, that is a general signal, two-sided signal, that is, I have a situation like this. Well, it goes to infinity, it goes to minus infinity, this is the t-axis, this is zero. Well, then what we can do is, <coughs> at some arbitrary value of t, to find out the region of convergence of this, at some arbitrary value of t, let us say capital T, we make a break. That is, we look up on this signal, <coughs> we look up on this signal x of t as the sum of a right-sided signal and a left-sided signal. We can do that. The only problem is at capital T, what value shall you take? If you, well, you have a choice. You can give x of capital T to completely to the right-sided signal and 0 to the left-sided left -sided signal. That is, the left-sided left -side, left signal may start from 0. That you can apportion. It does not matter. You can give half to xr, half to xn or you can make any proportion. It does not matter. But what matters is that <coughs> if this I call xr of s and this I call xl of s and if both exist independently, then you see the region of convergence for the right-sided signal shall be real part of S greater than equal to some sigma R, right, if it exists, whereas the left-sided signal, the region of convergence will be real part of S less than equal to some sigma L, all right, and obviously, the total fully, the total Laplace transform, that is capital X of S equal to XR plus XL shall exist. You know, the two can independently exist, but the sum may not exist. <coughs> Why not? Because sigma R could be, could be greater than sigma L. If that happens, then obviously there is no region of intersection the intersection is a null region and therefore the Fourier, the Laplace transform does not exist. The situation is this. Let us say this is sigma equal to 0, <coughs> this is sigma equal to 0 and sigma r is somewhere here, sigma l is somewhere here. Then x r of s exists to the right of sigma r. Um, X L of S exists, let me use a different color, X L of S exists to the left of sigma L and it is this strip over which capital X of S shall exist. It is over this strip so between sigma R and sigma L. So this is the region of intersection. On the other hand, if, if sigma R exceeds sigma L, then obviously there is no intersection and therefore capital X of S may not shall not exist. This is the question of two-sided signal. And one must be very careful about the existence. You can write something, you can do some integration mechanically, but it does not make sense. It does not mean anything. You have to put your mind to it. In other words, you have to keep the region of convergence in, in mind all the time. Now, uh, let us consider some examples to illustrate these regions of convergence. And uh, I want you to put your whole mind on this. One example is x t equal e to the minus a t. It is a finite duration signal 0 to capital T and it is 0 otherwise. If you, if you put down in the uh, definition and carry out this integral, obviously uh, 0 to capital T, that is the range we have to integrate e to the minus a t, e to the minus s t d t. This is equal to, does it matter what is the value of s? What is the real part of s? It does not. It can be anything because the regions, the limits are 0 and capital T. And you can see that this would be 1 by s plus a, 1 minus e to the minus s plus a times t, capital T. Is that okay? This is the uh, Laplace transform. Can you make a comment by looking at this? By looking at this expression, can you make a comment about its character? Yes, 
Ah, we will come to this, yes. If S is equal to A, if S is equal to minus A, if S is equal to minus A, yes. Limit is different. Limit is different. But we'll come come to this question later. <coughs> a, a, an elementary uh, comment about the character of this function. Don't you see that it's irrational? It is not a rational function. Why not? The denominator is a polynomial, but the numerator is an infinite series. A polynomial is a finite series in the variable containing only integral powers of the variable. This is not a polynomial, this is an infinite series, and therefore it is an irrational function, the first thing you notice. Then the question of poles and zeros. Well, this integral, this integral is evaluated without any respect or convergence <coughs> of the real part of S. We didn't consider it at all. It always converges to this, and therefore the ROC, a common sense says, the ROC must be the complete S plane. It must exist at all values of S. The only problem is at S equal to minus A. S equal to minus A looks like a pole. And at a pole, X of S cannot exist. Why not? At a pole, by definition, X of S blows up. And therefore, it is not defined at a pole. The region of convergence, therefore, cannot include a pole. Region of convergence, or in other words, there cannot be a pole in the region of convergence. So, if the complete S plane, as common sense says, if this is the region of convergence, then there must not exist a pole. All right? S equal to minus A, in fact, is not a pole, because S equal to minus A, the numerator also becomes zero. And if you apply La Hopital's rule, then you can see that X of S, at S equal to minus A, well, is equal to capital T. You can do by differentiation and then put S equal to minus A. All right? It doesn't have poles. Does it have zeros? Well, if it is a zeros, then this must be satisfied. The numerator shall be equal to zero. At this value, the denominator cannot be zero. All right? This is the definition of zeros. Now, why do you say it doesn't exist? Because what I find is e to the minus s plus a t is equal to 1. And 1 I can write as e to the minus j 2 k pi. Can I? Where k is 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. All right? We can do that. Any value of k shall do. And therefore, and therefore, this equation can be satisfied at infinite number of values of S, which means that it shall have infinite number of zeros. And these zeros are obviously S plus A T is equal to minus, I am sorry, J 2 K pi. There is no particular significance to my taking minus sign. Because k is allowed to be positive or negative. I could as well take plus e to the j 2 k pi. It, does, it should not have matter. It is only for the, <coughs> for the elegance of the result that I am writing this. Which means that s is equal to uh, minus a t. No. Minus a plus, plus j. 2 k pi divided by t, where k <coughs> equals to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2, k is simply a positive or negative integer. It can be 0. But then denominator is also. If k is 0, then it is s equal to minus a. That is correct. k cannot be 0. Is it okay? Sir, yes. sir this function should also have infinite number of poles. No, it's an irrational function. It's an irrational function. What I said was about, I was expecting this question. What I said uh, about the equality of the number of poles and zeros applies only to rational functions, not to irrational. Irrational functions are not rational anyway. They don't behave according to the norms of rationality. There are all kinds of odd things, and this is one of the odd things, that it has an infinite number of zeros, but no poles. All right? And if I make a picture, the picture is very nice. 
एक्स इक्वल टू माइनस ए प्लस जे टू के फाइ डिवाइडेड बाय कैपिटल टी दी जीरोस आर लाइक दिस दी पोल जीरो प्लॉट सिग्मा जे ओमेगा एंड सपोज ए इज ग्रेटर देन जीरो देन ऑब्वियसली माइनस ए इज समहर हियर दिस इज माइनस ए एंड दी जीरोस एंड दी जीरोस आर देस नो जीरो हियर देस इज जीरो एट प्लस जे टू पाइ बाइ टी देन प्लस जे फोर पाइ बाइ टी प्लस जे सिक्स पाइ बाइ टी एंड सो ऑन सिमेट्रिकली विथ रिगार्ड टू विथ रिगार्ड टू दी सिग्मा एक्सिस एंड दी डिफरेंस बिटवीन टू सक्सेसिव पोल्स इज सिंपली ट्वाइस पाइ डिवाइडेड बाइ टू सक्सेसिव जीरोस इज ट्वाइस पाइ डिवाइडेड बाइ टी इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फंक्शन इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फंक्शन यू शेल है occasion to look at this function later when you do uh, communication systems there are systems in which uh, irrational functions like this are encountered all right any question on this what is the region of convergence whole plane whole plane why because there are no poles and therefore to the right to the left or uh, any direction it doesn't matter the complete s plane is the region of convergence let's consider a second example in which i have an x of t which is e to the minus e to the minus b mod t that is its plot is like this it starts at uh, it starts at 1 goes like this it goes like this so t equal to 0 is a point of discontinuity the two slopes do not agree f t equal to 0 minus and t equal to 0 plus the slopes are equal and opposite in sign all right now if i want to find out capital x of s for this function obviously i have to distinguish between two regions minus infinity to 0 and 0 to plus infinity and therefore i can write this as minus infinity to 0 i can write e to the minus b mod t since t itself is negative i can write this as e to the b t is that okay okay e to the b t e to the minus s t now i want your complete attention because we are going to have the complication of regions of convergence let us see plus integral 0 to infinity e to the minus b t is that okay e to the minus s t d t let's look at the let's call this x1 and let's call this x2 and let's look at look at both of these carefully x1 is minus infinity to 0 e to the power b minus sigma t all right e to the power b minus sigma t e to the minus j omega t then dt obviously this integral x1 shall converge if b minus sigma is Greater than zero, t itself is negative, and therefore this b minus sigma must be greater than zero. Okay, so capital X one exists if b minus sigma is greater than zero. That means b is greater than real part of S. Agreed? That means real part of S. less than b all right and what is the expression real part of s less than b means what it's a left plane why do you, why does it become a left plane because it took took a left sided signal our small x1 was a left sided signal so the region of convergence is a left plane all right real part of s less than b similarly you can show that capital x2 well the, what is the value of x1 if you carry out this integration then obviously what you get is minus 1 by s minus b real part of s less than b <coughs> it's a simple matter to carry out this integral and put the limits all right similarly you can show that capital x2 capital x2 of s 
is we have already shown this 1 by s plus b capital x2 of s is simply the oh, i'm sorry this is simply the laplace transform of e to the minus bt ut isn't that right we have already proved that this is equal to 1 by s plus b provided real part of s is greater than minus b all right so the roc for this is real part of s greater than minus b and the roc for capital x1 is real part s less than b and the roc of capital x which is x1 plus x2 must be the intersection of the regions real s less than b and real s greater than minus b now let's look at the s plane let's look at the s plane sigma <coughs> j omega and we have real real s less than b let's take b as a positive quantity then this is b and this is minus b real s less than b is this and real s greater than minus b is this region and you see the intersection is simply the strip bounded by sigma equal to minus b and sigma equal to plus b this is the roc of capital x of s all right so this is an example of a function whose region of convergence has a finite width it is a finite strip what is the complete expression for uh, for capital x of s let's look at that capital x of s was 1 minus 1 by <coughs> what was it s minus b plus 1 over s plus b so this is simply equal to s squared minus b squared then minus 2b or plus 2b plus 2b what are the poles and zeros Minus minus two two minus two minus two too bad. Minus two b. Well, that's okay. That's okay. We don't care. But where are the poles at zero? There is a pole at plus b, and there is a pole at minus b. This is the sigma axis, sigma, and this is j omega axis. So this is sigma <coughs> equal to zero. This is sigma equal to plus b, sigma equal to minus b. Now, do you see that the region of convergence? is bounded by vertical lines passing through the poles because it is an overlap or intersection between two infinite regions it has become bounded but the boundary lines pass through the poles all right between b and minus b and this is always the case whenever whenever you have a function whose roc is a is a finite width the ROC cannot contain a pole, so it must be bounded by poles. Well, all these facts lead to the same conclusion, and these are aids to understanding the region of convergence. Now, I <coughs> ask you a question in the next 10 minutes. I have an X of S, which is 1 over S plus 1, S plus 2. And I specify, I have to specify the region of convergence, all right. Suppose I specify that the region of convergence <coughs> sigma g omega, suppose I specify that the region of convergence is, there are two poles, all right. One is at minus 1 and the other is at minus 2. And I specify that the region of convergence is a right plane. That is, this is the region of convergence. This is minus 1, this is minus 2. And you already know that x of s could be expanded as 1 by s plus 1 minus 1 by s plus 2. Can you tell me what is the x of t? I have specified this and I have specified the region of convergence. E raised power minus t minus e raised power minus 2t ut. Minus 2t yes. whole multiplied whole by ut. 
the clue is here that the region of convergence is right plane. So, the signal must be a right-sided one. And indeed, this signal is a right-sided one starting at t equal to 0. All right. So, if this function allow me this region of convergence is specified, we can definitely write this. Now, let us complicate the matter. <coughs> we have an x of s which is 1 over s plus 1, s plus 2 and the region of convergence is like this, g omega sigma, we have a pole at minus 1, a pole at minus 2 and the region of convergence is to the left of to the left of minus 2 instead of to the right of minus 1 now it is to the left of minus 2 ok now once again this is the same 1 by s plus 1 minus 1 by s plus 2 <coughs> so what is x of t <coughs> it must be now left sided left sided wow now be careful e raised to minus 2t minus e raised to minus t u of minus t wonderful this is the correct answer. This is a left sided signal and e to the minus 2t comes from here. You must not forget the negative <coughs> sign which has been taken care of. See minus e to the minus t u of minus t, the Laplace transform is 1 by s plus 1. So, the negative sign has to be taken care of. This is perfectly, perfectly valid. Now, the third situation x of s is 1 over s plus 1, s plus 2 and the third situation is that it is a strip bounded by zero minus one and minus two and the region of convergence is this. Now what can you say about x of t? Minus t is for minus t u of minus t minus e to the minus t u of minus t minus minus e is for minus t u of t now minus 2t e to the minus 2t u of t what is the logic has everybody understood the logic why it is so the region to the left of minus 1 <coughs> region to the left of minus 1 you can, this can be thought of as an intersection between a left plane and a right plane if you consider the total left plane to the left of minus 1 obviously it should be contributed to by the pole at s equal to minus 1 and therefore this the first factor comes with a negative sign minus e to the minus t u of minus t and the the the, the right plane to the right of minus 2 obviously shall be contributed by s plus 2 term and this is why you get e to the minus 2 t u t all right so if the region of convergence and the function is specified you should be able to uh, find out the function uniquely. All right. If the ROC is not specified, the answer cannot be unique. In the next lecture, we shall look at the inversion of Laplace transform. The always, in, in the example that we worked out, that is 1 by s plus 1, 1 by s plus 2, what we did was to make a partial fraction expansion and invert term by term. Well, this is the beauty of rational functions that we can always do that. We can always do this and this is an algebraic exercise. There is no integration. There is no differentiation involved. However, if the function is not rational, then we cannot make a partial fraction expansion and we have to appeal to more fundamental things and we shall indeed see that it is an, it is a, an integral exactly like Fourier transform, but there is a small difference. We shall do these details next time.